I think um, a perfect opening to this discussion uh, in terms of situating us and also giving us a good critical view of um, what the issues are with the AKP, um, what its strengths are, and where it is perhaps um, somewhat vulnerable. Our second speaker is Professor Dror Zaevi from, uh, from Ben Gurion University in Beersheba. Um, he is professor of Middle East Studies uh, at that university where he teaches social and cultural history. Um, his um, training was at Tel Aviv University and postdoctoral studies at Princeton University in the United States. He then came back and helped found the Department of Middle East Studies uh, in, um, ben, at Ben Gurion University and was its chair um, in the 1990s and then again uh, in the first part of this of uh, the 2000s. He also um, was one of the founders of the Chaim Herzog Center for Middle East Studies and Diplomacy and its first chair um, from its founding in 1997 through 2002. He has a wide experience uh, in Turkey both as a, uh, as a scholar of the Ottoman Empire and as someone who's now looking very carefully at issues in um, Republican Turkish history. He's going to speak on the resilience of conspiracy theories, the resurrection of a Turkish deep state under AKP rule. So um, it would appear that Henri and Dror have planned the segue from uh, one talk to the next. Dror, please. Thank you. Um, I'd like to speak about something that I think most of the Israeli public doesn't really know about or knows about very little. So uh, I think it's an interesting uh, factor in, in Turkish politics that perhaps we should know a little more about. For personal reasons and for research reasons, I've been spending a long, lot of time in, in Turkey lately. So this, this talk is based not just on research, but also on my personal experience and my daily interaction with people, mostly in Istanbul, but also in other uh, areas. Academics, but also other middle class people uh, from all walks of life. Uh, in these interactions, I noticed that this idea of the deep state, or derin devlet, as, as it's called in Turkish, always lurks immediately beneath the surface. And another thing I noticed is that there is an almost total absence of serious investigative mode in the media. People talk about these things about the, the deep state, but it's never really explored deeply in the media. So my, my discussion is about these two phenomena and whether they're connected and how it's changing over time. Um, why is it so interesting to me? Perhaps because of the difference between Israel and Turkey. Uh, there are striking similarities between the two countries, although Israelis don't always like to hear this. Uh, they're both problematic democracies. The army plays a major role in both of them. There is always a built-in tension between state and religion in both of them. Uh, but in this respect, the, the fact that there is something behind politics, there is no resemblance. We don't know this from our, uh, from our experience. We don't have conspiracy theories about, about our states. Uh, what you see is what you get. I mean, to be sure, there are uh, uh, nefarious forces at play. You have the, the state wants to close down departments at Ben Gurion University because of their politics, uh, for instance. But nobody would assume that there is something behind it, some forces forcing the government. It's simply the MPs, the members of the Knesset, and the, and the ministers at play here, and not uh, not something else. Uh, so conspiracy theories in Israel are limited to the lunatic fringes of, of politics, but in Turkey they are just uh, in, the, in the center. A good starting point, perhaps, is a story that connects very recent history and events that occurred almost two decades ago. Uh, um, Henri mentioned the Turgut Ozal before, and, and as um, some of you may know, uh, a couple of months ago the remains of uh, President Turgut Ozal, who was prime minister from 1983 and then president from 1989 to 1993, when he died, uh, his remains were exhumed and um, and taken to a laboratory on suspicion that he died of poisoning. 
and that this was covered up by the state. Now, the, the whole story is very unclear. Nobody knows where the, the story comes from. The, 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 the family felt that he might have been poisoned. There was something unclear about uh, uh, what, the, what the state did after he died, but then nobody really knows why, but then there was a, a decision to take, dig his body out of the grave and take him to, uh, to an autopsy. Uh, now, Sem Rahanim, his wife, had suspicions about the death even at the time, even in 1993, and as we know, she, uh, she kept them, she, she, was, uh, she was holding on to these suspicions, she took a lock of his hair and put it in a safe somewhere abroad just to make sure that, uh, that this thing could be, could be investigated further. And this tells us something about the zeitgeist, the, the feeling at the time, 1993. Um, apparently, uh, it had to do with the basic suspicion that Ozal incurred the wrath of a murky group of generals and other po powerful men. His push for democratization, his, peaceful, his uh, search for a peaceful solution with the Kurds, his openness to other types of interface between state and religion, his pan-Turkic policies. We don't know exactly what of these were the problem, but they, they are said to have been anathema to the old military elite. Uh, and at that time, I think, uh, in Turkey, the, the existence of a deep state was well known to everybody. It was, it was a well-known secret. We know this kind of secret from, from our own uh, uh, state. We all have these secrets. I remember in the 1960s and 70s, the existence of Sayeret Matkal, this commando unit, was a secret that everybody in the country knew, but it was still a secret. And that's the sense you get about the deep state in the, in the uh, 1990s, at the beginning of the two, 2000s. What is the deep state? The New Yorker puts it in a recent article thusly. The deep state is a presumed clandestine network of military officers and their civilian allies who for decades suppressed and sometimes murdered dissidents, communists, minority groups, reporters, Islamists, Christian miss missionaries, anyone thought to pose a threat to the secular order established in 1923 by Mustafa Kemal Ataturk. And this is important. Anyone uh, uh, thought to pose a threat to the secular state. The deep state, historian says, has functioned as a kind of a shadow government, disseminating propaganda, disseminating propaganda to whip up public fear or destabilizing civilian governments not to its liking. Now it seems we can add assassination of presidents and a series of other culprits to that long list because as the media sources have it, the remains of, uh, remains of strychnine have been found in Ozal's body. This is a very recent news from the last few days. Uh, presumably he was poisoned by the same sinister mandarins. Uh, in a very recent interview yesterday, I think, by his son Ahmed, he claimed that uh, the European Union, Germany, and maybe France were involved in this in this murder in the uh, uh, in the 1990s. Now, uh, this uh, this all came to a head in the in the Susuruki uh, incident in in uh, the 1990s. I don't want to go into it, but some something happened that uh, that uh, created the impression that this was indeed the case. There was a, there was some kind of cable, there was some kind of a plan uh, to govern Turkey from within, and perhaps this was, this was true to some extent. Uh, um, the bosses of this deep state were secular-minded military-industrial judicial complex, prop propped probably by outside forces uh, such as NATO, or uh, the United States, and the foot soldiers were supposed to be an assortment of special forces, uh, secret servicemen, and uh, ultra-nationalist militias, some of whom were trained by NATO. As you know, the Soviet Union was supposed to invade Turkey and Europe, and, there, and NATO trained groups in those countries to, uh, to fight against the Soviet penetration, and these these forces who were trained by NATO went rogue, went rogue and uh, started to do their own battles inside the state. This is the story. And 
And in most of these scenarios, you find the USA pulling the strings of the state and using the secretive tentacles to interfere in Turkish domestic politics for reasons that I don't want to go into. Now, when AKP uh, took office in 2002, uh, it, start, it started dismantling this deep state. And uh, the claims about the Ergenekon um, underground and the Balios uh, coup attempt were for most Turks the final piece of the puzzle. There it was, the embodiment of the deep state phenomenon. Uh, I think uh, many people, Gareth Jenkins and Danny Roderick and others, showed very clearly that much of the Ergenekon case against the generals, against the academics, against others, was based on very flimsy evidence. And most, moreover, that most of it must have been fabricated, probably by the state. But the other side of it should also be stressed. The investigation seems to have been, seems to have truly discovered some evidence for a deep state organization which was later drowned by an ugly tsunami of lies and fabrications. It thus managed, the government thus managed to bungle the promising beginnings uh, by being too zealous and lumping together true conspirators with innocents who just dared to criticize the government. Um, <laughs> officers who expressed their dislike for the current government, organizations promoting secular organizations, all these were accused and lumped together with the Ergenekon underground. So uh, if there was a chance that the Ergenekon case handled uh, carefully and correctly could, under, could, could unearth the subversive cable called the deep state, it was blown up by the government and the judiciary. Uh, I would say that this reaction by the government is itself this idea of a complot, of, 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 of a, uh, something sinister behind everything is also part of this state of mind of consp conspiracy, th conspiracy theory by the state. Now what I would like to get at uh, is that the deep structure of Turkish politics hasn't changed even after the huge revolution that swept the country with AKP's victory and 10 years of rule. Uh, Turkey's political and intellectual elite is still convinced that behind the scenes evil powers still lurk, making the real decision, the real decisions. This is remarkable, first of all, because uh, a mildly Islamist party rose to power, despite this big deep state thing, and in short order it managed to assume control of the judicial system. Uh, as uh, Henri said, uh, bring the army to heel, break the power of the media, and overtake some of the most important academic institutions. So AKP seems, seems all powerful, but still there is a sense that the deep state is there. Uh, it is still perceived, the government is still perceived as a superstructure above the sinister deep state that is very much there. The only difference is now there is a bifurcated image of the deep state. While the new green elite, the, the Anatolian Tigers, these people who came to power with AKP, still sees the deep state in terms of the old army-led cable that still holds the true reins of power and should be further dismantled. The old secular elite that was pushed to the margins uh, by the new elite has given uh, Derin Devlet, has given this deep state a new shape, a new shape. Uh, in, its, uh, in its view, the deep state is a, is a clandestine campaign by reactionary forces. Of course, the AKP, Erdogan, or Fethullah Gulen, or perhaps both in collusion, to do away with the remnants of the Kemalist state. But as in the old deep state, uh, this is only the tip of the iceberg. This is the only, only the tip of the iceberg. It is never simply a local game uh, in the Turkish arena. Behind Erdogan and Gulen, there are other greater puppet masters, according to this view, which is shared by many, many Turks. Uh, curiously, once again, you'd find the CIA, the Americans, NATO, sometimes Israel plays a role, in it, although it's not very prominent. 
maybe because of their hatred of, of Kemalism uh, of old, maybe because it's, uh, they see this, the Americans see this, see this as a way to control the Islamic world. Uh, the fact that Gulen is the, in the United States is proof positive of the fact that it's, he's implicated in this shadow war. It says something about the Turkish conception of politics that the possibility of a simple, what you see is what you get, uh, kind of political structure never crosses their minds. Uh, it could be a sinister secular power or a sinister religious one, but never simply Erdogan, AKP, eh, eh, JHP, CHP, or MHP, and their political outlook. People would explain to you in length why President Gül, the president of Turkey, will form his own party uh, very soon because Erdogan has outrun his usefulness for the Americans and uh, Gülen has no use for him anymore. Or how the police will take over uh, operations in Şemdanli in, in, in eastern Turkey because the Americans or those puppet masters, whoever they are, don't trust the army anymore and they want to to take uh, to uh, give this force to the police. So it seems to me uh, that the uh, conspiracy theories are there to stay. Now the question is, the next question in my mind at least is where is investigative journalism? You have all these stories. You have these stories, you have these uh, questions about Ergenekon for instance, raised by the people I mentioned before. Uh, that in, in, I think in many countries, would uh, invite journalists to ask the questions, to go and investigate further. There is none, none of this in Turkey, and that, that's something that bothers me, and I don't really have the answers for. Um, uh, the same is true for other things. For instance, uh, uh, two months ago, at the beginning of September, there was a, uh, an explosion in a big depot, uh, arms depot in Turkey in Afyon Karahisar, and 25 soldiers were killed. Uh, the government and the army said there was uh, some mistake, some, some grenade blew up by accident, but nobody really took up the questions that this raised, not just the questions about whether it was a, a, a sabotage or whether it was an accident, but also how did it happen, what, what went wrong there. There was no real investigation of these things. Um, I don't know if this is a matter of journalistic traditions. Some of us may remember people like Uru Mumju, uh, who was a good investigative journalist, probably killed by the deep state. Uh, Ahmed Sheikh is another very good investigative journalist who was uh, incarcerated, put in prison by, by the current government because it, he asked too many questions about what's going on in the state. But these are also two ex ex exceptions who point out the rule. There is no serious investigative journalism in Turkey. The conclusion, and I reached my conclusion, uh, is that there must be a vicious circle here. The state shuts down criticism and emasculates investigative journalism. Journalists are thus cowed into submission and self-censorship. And as long as there is no in investigation, the deep state or simply the state, in this case, will continue to play its dangerous underhand games. Thank you. Thank you very much. The, the question of 